Welcome to part three of how to install granite countertops. In part one, I removed all of the existing ceramic tile from these kitchen counters. In part two, I purchased and transported two pieces of granite countertop. And in this installment, I'm going to attempt to cut and fit the granite slabs to my kitchen countertops. I've already moved one of the granite slabs out to a cutting area that I've set up. I've just laid it on 4x4s with a couple of 2x4s going this way to support the granite sufficiently. When the granite is on end, it's much stronger than when it's flat like this. So it's important that when it's flat, it be adequately supported from underneath. That's why I have the two pieces of lumber running lengthwise underneath this slab. To cut the granite, I'm going to use just a standard circular saw. And I purchased a blade yesterday. It's a continuous diamond blade made for tile and stone cutting. And I'm going to also use water when I cut with this to hopefully make a nice smooth cut. The first piece of granite I'm going to cut is this long one that goes from this corner to about right here. I need to cut this end off straight because I don't need the end detail right here. I need to just cut that off. And on this side over here, I need to cut a 45 degree angle about four or five inches into the counter and then finish it up with a straight cut back to the wall. After those two cuts are done, I'm going to cut out for the sink. The first cut I'm going to make is just a straight cut down the side of the granite right here. This is the side that goes up against the wall so I don't need this little piece that hangs down right here. So I'm going to cut it off. To make the cut, I'm first going to lay down a strip of blue masking tape. I'm doing this because it's been said that it will help to reduce any chipping when I make the cut. Next I'm going to make a mark where the saw needs to cut. Next I'm going to place my saw so that the blade touches right where my mark is, right where I want the cut to be. And I'll make a mark on the other side because that's where I'm going to place this straight edge for the saw to follow as I make the cut. The straight edge will help me make a nice straight smooth cut. I've made my little mark by the saw base so I can remove the saw. And I'll place my straight edge right there. And I'll square it up with the granite and clamp it in place. I now have my saw guide clamped in place and it's time to start cutting. To make this cut, I'm going to back into it because the blade is spinning this way. And to reduce chipping, it's better if I cut into the face of the granite rather than coming out of the face of the granite. I'm also going to have some water running right where the blade is meeting the stone. So hopefully that'll make a nice smooth cut. Pretty. Okay, yes. And it's all the way through with the exception of this little spot in front that I hadn't anticipated. The 
granite goes down quite a bit lower here so my blade didn't cut all the way through so I'll have to get my blade depth a little deeper and finish that up. It did break off a little bit right here, but the face of the granite looks good. And my cut looks very good as well. I've just finished cutting what will be this side of the counter, and I'm going to move on to the other side now. The piece of granite that I have is not long enough for me to make a 45 degree cut from this corner all the way back to the wall, so I'm going to have to cut it square and then do a partial 45 degree angle back to this corner. I'm now set up for my second cut. I have my straight edge here for a saw guide and a piece of tape here where the actual cut will be made. I've also placed a couple of pieces of tape here to protect the surface from scratching. And here we go with this cut, this is an important one because this will show on the countertop, so I need to be extra, extra careful. Good. Well, elapsed time since you've last seen me has been a couple of hours, and if you'll notice, the blade that I'm using is different, and that's because that continuous diamond blade that I had really started to wear out after I started making this cut and it really just started trying to walk out this way and it got so hot that it discolored and warped so I actually had to cut off more than I initially planned to but it'll still work um, this is a turbo blade and instead of a continuous diamond rim around it it has these little notches and I think those are for cooling and also to take away material as it cuts so with some trial and error I think I've decided that the turbo rim diamond blade is the best choice for cutting granite on site with a circular saw I've got my 45 degree angle cut set up so let's see how this one goes And let's see how this looks. Because this one, if there's imperfections, will definitely be visible in the kitchen. And looks pretty good. It did leave some little chips here in the granite, which is really unfortunate. But I'll just have to fill those with epoxy once the granite is installed. Next I'm going to cut 
this piece here, it's about three feet long. So here's this piece. I kept my factory bull nose or finished edge on this side because this is the entryway to the house and I wanted the nicest edge right here. On this other side, I'm going to have to smooth this out right here and epoxy a piece of granite underneath here as well and smooth it all out to mimic this as best I can. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, it's good. And next we'll cut this little one here for setting your little hot plate of macaroni after cooking. So on this piece of granite, all that I have left to do is cut out the hole for the kitchen sink. But before I do that, I'm going to bring it inside and test fit it on the counter. Once this piece is in place temporarily, then I will cut the piece of granite that goes right here and match up this corner so that both slabs are in their final position. When this is accomplished, then I will know exactly where the cutout for the sink needs to be. So we've got it in place now, temporarily, and I think I chose a decent color, but that's highly subjective. The next step is to cut this piece right here, which we've laid down right here so we can accurately make the marks and do our measurements without fear of cutting in the wrong spot. We've made our marks, they're probably hard to see here, but this is the piece that we're going to cut out of this slab, and on my father's very ingenious suggestion, I put a piece of tape here as an indicator of where to stop cutting as I'm backing into this cut here, because since this is an inside cut, if I were to go too far, that would be bad news. So, we'll take it out to the processing area and start cutting. I've got my straight edge set up here, and we're going to make this 45 degree cut right here. And we've made this cut, so next we'll reposition everything and make this straight cut right here. I've got this set up now, and we're going to start this cut right here. So I've made my cut to right here, and I've attached a little uh, support dongle on the end here to hopefully minimize the chance of chipping when I get to this point. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is what you want to avoid. I uh, got a little bit overzealous in my cutting and went too far. Luckily, 
being that this piece hasn't been cut to length yet, I can just trim off a little bit more here and no one will know the uh, foolishness error that I made. So here we go, take two on my 45 degree cut. You know what they say, uh, measure once, cut twice, right? So this was a success. I cut to the right point here. Now I'm going to flip it and do a little more cutting on the other side and then chip this piece off. I ran my saw a little bit more in here and chipped this off. Now I'll just use a grinder with a diamond wheel to finish up this corner cut right here. And that's how it looks after grinding. Now I'll see how it all fits together. Looking good. I think I'll have to make a few adjustments. I have both pieces pushed up against each other now, and you can definitely see the crack, but that's okay. A lot of the trouble here is this piece isn't level with this piece, so I'm going to have to do some shimming to make everything match up. And then even after all that's done, I'll use some epoxy seaming compound to smooth everything out. So now that I know that these two pieces match up satisfactorily, I'll take it back outside and cut this piece to length so the stove can fit in there. Now I'll make the marks to cut out for the sink. The considerations for cutting out the sink are making it in the center of this window opening and also making sure it's not too far back that it hits the backsplash or so far forward that it would get in the way of the cabinet that's underneath here. I've laid down my template and centered it with the window and traced around it sufficiently for me to make some cuts outside. So we'll lug this thing back outside, make some cuts, and see how it looks. For this project I'm using a drop-in or self-rimming sink. This isn't quite as classy as an undermount sink which would go in really high-end granite countertop installations. However, it's much easier for the do-it-yourselfer to accomplish with a drop-in sink because I don't have to polish this edge that I cut. I'll be able to just freehand this, cut along the line, and then drop the sink in and it'll cover up this cut that I made. So at the expense of being not quite as fancy, I'll save a lot of time and I think it'll look just okay. So these cuts I'm doing without a guide. Ear protection, ladies and gentlemen. My wife said use ear protection. So, there you go, sweetheart. Now resuming.
I've cut three of the four sides for my sink. I've saved this one for last because when I make this cut, this slab will be really weak and I want to exert as little vibration in this area as possible. So I'll cross my fingers, cut this, and then we'll take it inside. I've just finished this fourth cut and now we'll very carefully take it inside and finish up these corners with a grinder. We were able to successfully move this honker back into position and now I'm going to use my grinder to finish this cut. I'll start by going diagonally at each one of these corners to remove this big piece out of the middle and then I'll just start working around these corners and making the curve. I'm using a vacuum cleaner as well as a grinder to hopefully suck up some of the dust because this won't be a wet cut, this will be a dry cut. I've cut through this one as much as I could with one pass, however it's not all the way through, and I'll move on to this next corner. I'll just do every corner in the same way, and then I'll work on removing the last little bit of material. I've finished making all four diagonal cuts at the corners of my slab here that needs to be removed. I forgot to mention that in order to support this when it inevitably falls out when I finish cutting it. I've screwed some pieces of wood here underneath the cabinets with some wood on top of these cross members that is the same thickness as this plywood. That way it won't fall when it comes loose. I think the next thing I'm going to do to finish out these cuts is go underneath and cut a little bit from the bottom because the blade of the grinder is round, it's tough to finish up these cuts. As you can see, there's some material there, and I'll be able to remove a little bit more of it from underneath. So from underneath, I was able to cut up into the slab enough to remove those last little areas of granite. So I'll just do that on every corner and then remove this big piece. Now I just need to take my grinder and go around these corners. I 
I've cut into this corner as much as I can with the grinder, so now I'll come in this way and break off these pieces. One down, three to go. That completes the cutout for the sink. And now all of the pieces of granite are cut to the correct length. But unfortunately, it's dinner time now, so the next step will have to wait till another day. Until then, thanks for watching.